online. We want to welcome you to our Impact Family Church service. This is our in-person service, and we're so blessed to have you connecting with us this morning, and we trust that you will be wonderfully blessed. If you've got your Bibles, get ready, get your notepad free, and let's enjoy God's Word. This morning I want to speak about the lifestyle of praise. The importance of praise in our lives. But I want to speak about the lifestyle because it's not about a moment, it's not about an event, it's not about a meeting. It's not just about, okay, let's praise Him now or praise each other now until the next time. We're speaking about a lifestyle that we've developed over time. For anything to become a lifestyle, it needs to start by being a value in your life. Because if it's a value, it becomes a priority. And if it becomes a priority, it will become part of your lifestyle. If you look at your current lifestyle, it consists of priorities, things that you do every day. And the priorities that you have are your priorities because you value each one of those things. If we learn to value praise in our lives, we will prioritize it in our lives every day. And before we know it, we will develop a lifestyle of praise. If I'm really trusting God that we are going to learn how to live a life of praise. That it comes out of us naturally. It's not something that we have to break a sweat over. But it just comes out of us spontaneously. How often have we said the well done? How many of us enjoy hearing those words, well done? But how many of us walk around expressing those words, well done? How many times do we look up to Him and we just simply say, God, can we say to you this morning, well done. Thank you for the sun that rose. Thank you for the birds that are singing. Thank you for oxygen in my lungs. Thank you for what I have. And I just want to say to you, well done. You've done it again. You've carried us through another week. You've carried us through another month. You've helped us pay all our bills. We thought we'd never get through it. So we just want to say to you, well done. How many times have you looked at your husband, your wife, your spouse, your children, your friends, your neighbors, and they just said, you know what? Can I just say to you, well done. That's expressing praise. And this morning we're going to understand the importance and the power of praise. But we're going to understand two things about praise this morning. Vertical praise and horizontal praise because that forms our life. But let's look at the definition of praise quickly. It praise is a form of social interaction expressing recognition, reassurance and admiration. When we praise each other or when we give praise to God, we are recognizing what God has done. We're recognizing what we are doing. We're showing and expressing reassurance and admiration. Praise is expressed verbally as well as the body language. We've had to learn during this COVID pandemic to express a lot of body language, especially living behind the mask. We've had to wink and hopefully no one will misinterpret the wink. And then there will be times when we have to give a thumbs up, or that was fantastic, or a high five, Bluetooth to each other. We'll find some way of expressing praise. But this morning, vertical praise is simply this. It's expressing one's respect and gratitude towards the deity. In our case, the one and only God. Expressing recognition, but gratitude and respect to Jesus. You, I'm sure you must have picked up the theme this morning, right from the beginning when you walked in. As there was the countdown, you heard the song, And then every praise be unto our God. And then we started to sing, When the praise goes up, the walls come down. Then I will give you praise in every situation. And then even before we pray for our minds and over our lives, then we will praise Him in the storms. So I'm sure you've got the theme of this morning, that we're here to respect God, and we're here to give Him thanks and praise. To honor Him, to adore Him, to exalt Him, to worship Him, to glorify Him. And can I really encourage you that this vertical praise that I'm going to unpack with you this morning, you're going to see something very powerful and very dynamic, that when we give God praise, something changes and is never the same again. And those same principles that exist vertically can also exist horizontally. That when we give each other praise horizontally, everything starts to shift and change in our relationships and things will never be the same again. When we look at horizontal praise, that's expressing warm approval or admiration of. 
It's the compliments. It's the congratulations. It's the applauding. It's the celebrating. It's the pat on the back. How many times do we express that horizontally towards our kids? Do our kids receive more criticism, more discipline, or do they are they encouraged by our praise? There's a time for criticism, there's a time for feedback, there's a time for discipline, but can we really be honest with ourselves this morning? How much horizontal praise exists in our lives? And so often we just say to each other as Christians, praise God. And some people get comfortable with that because you go and hide in the closet and it's just you and God. And you just give God praise. And then like, no, go and praise your wife, go and praise your husband, go and praise your neighbor, go and praise your boss, go, go and praise and encourage others around you. Well, the Bible says that we should be complimenting, congratulating, applauding, celebrating, a pat on the back. It's so sad that when we walk past each other, where there are moments to celebrate, we are so consumed in our issues, so concerned by the challenges, that we forget to express horizontal praise. And then we ask ourselves, why is nothing changing in my marriage? It's because you're not expressing a regular praise towards each other. Because when we praise God, something changes. But when we praise each other, the same thing happens. Something changes. And that's what we're going to get to understand this morning. A lifestyle of praise. The Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. David says here, I have developed a lifestyle. I have understood the significance and the importance of praise. I can't let one day go by without praising God. Because if I understood that when I praise God, it becomes a magnet for the supernatural in my life, that it will shift and change everything. Mountains are moved. Bank accounts can change. That which the devil thinks he can hold over your life can be broken as we give God praise. Hebrews 13 and verse 15 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that openly profess His name. Don't get ashamed of declaring the praises of God as a Christian. Speak it openly. Don't get uncomfortable when your husband praises you in the midst of other family members. Babe, there's a time and a place for everything. Can you just keep quiet? Man, I want to profess it openly because praise is not something to be done in secret. Praise is something to be done in open so that God can display His glory in the open. Amen? That was a good moment to say amen. <laughs> It is a sacrifice of praise. You know why it's a sacrifice of praise? Can we just be brutally vulnerable and honest? Do we really always want to praise each other? Don't look so early. No. Because of that, I will only praise him when he apologizes. He hasn't apologized, so why must I praise him? Why must I say, hey, good looking, when he can't even pay attention to who I am? And so we make praise conditional. So if God shows up, we praise Him. If our wife shows up, we praise Him. If our kids behave, we praise Him. So why is praise suddenly conditional when praise is supposed to be a sacrifice? When you don't feel like it, when you're unhappy, when you're angry, when things are not going according to plan, when your expectations are not met, your food is cold, your coffee is cold, you still stand up and you offer a sacrifice of praise and it can shift the atmosphere in your house forever. But it's a sacrifice. How many of us really and all honestly want to praise God this morning? It's hot in this place. There's no aircon in this place. There's not enough fans in this place. Can you, can you see how the complaints can come out of us? See, the opposite of praise is criticism. Did you know that? You either praising or you're criticizing. There's the two sides to it. If you're not praising, you will criticize your wife. If you're not praising, you'll criticize your kids. If you're not praising, you'll criticize your past. Already, my word, how long is he going to go? It's a sacrifice of praise. Psalm 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't see blue faces in front of me struggling to breathe this morning. You've all got breath inside of your lungs as the Lord commands you. He encourages you and you are instructed this morning that everything that has breath complain about the weather. Complain about Complain, 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 and Jesus is saying, I wonder nothing is shifting. 
everything, nothing is changing because you're criticizing instead of praising. You want something to show, you start praising. And as you praise him in the storm, he gets you to the other side. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But you as Christians are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the complaints of the universe. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. You know what we struggle to praise of us? We forget the journey. We forget what God has done in our lives. He saved you. He rescued you. He forgave you. You were destined for hell and the grave for a lost eternity. But He picked you up. He dusted you clean. He forgave you your sin. And He offered you salvation. You are born again and free this morning. Isn't that something that we should be saying? God, you're good. Oh, but you don't understand, Lord. It's funny when we say God he doesn't understand when He actually understands. We actually wasted time in saying you don't understand. We could have actually filled that space by saying you're a good God who does understand. God, I give Him praise. James 5 verse 13 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let him pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Isaiah 61 verse 3, Jesus offers this to us. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of despair. But you've got to choose to put it on. Just like you open up your closet every day to wonder, what am I going to wear today? What am I going to put on today? How about waking up every morning and saying, today I'm choosing to put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now I'm going to say this very respectful this morning. I believe that there's a place for psychology, psychiatry, and I'm not going to go down that road and bad mouth anyone this morning because God is using men and women in different fields. But how about before running anywhere, run with praise? Give praise to God. Give praise to Jesus a moment. Before you rush to any doctor, before you rush into any situation, just give Jesus a chance first. And should He then guide you after you've given Him praise to go and see the doctor and go and see the psychologist, by all means, let them be used by God to touch your life. But can we start first by putting on the garment, not of complaining, not the garment of criticism, not the garment of ever arguing and fighting and having our way? But put on the garment of praise. Amen. And see what could just maybe shift that day in your marriage. What could this maybe shift in your mind, shift in your heart, shift in your life as we choose to just give Him praise. Psalm 100 and verse 4 says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and Praise is that. Do you know that praise and thanksgiving are a very happy marriage? They go together. Wherever there's thanksgiving, you're going to find praise. You will never find praise if there's no thanksgiving. You know, in the Old Testament, they had a tabernacle. It was a physical dwelling where God met with man. And the way into the physical dwelling, ultimately, was to get to the Holy of Holies, which was a place of intimacy. Listen carefully to this. To get to the place of intimacy, they had to first go through the gates of... Thanksgiving. Then to step into the courts of praise, then only can they step into a place of intimacy. God has shown us a model how to get intimate with Him and how to get intimate with each other. Start first. What did we speak about last Sunday? A heart of gratitude. We spoke about the gates of thanksgiving. So that this morning I can speak to you about the courts of praise. Because if you haven't been through thanksgiving, you will never get into the courts of praise. You want to put on a garment of praise? You know how you do that? Count your blessings. And then give God thanks. Wake up in the morning and say, Thank you, Lord, I still have a bed. Thank you, Lord, I still have running water. And it's clean running water. Thank you, Lord, that it's still hot water that I can shower in. The geyser still works, Jesus. Thank you that my eyes are still vigilant. I can still see, I can still touch, I can still feel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And before you know it, when you read through the gates of thanksgiving, you will find yourself in the courts of praise. And you will say, praise you, Jesus. We glorify you. We bless your holy name. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you look at your husband, and say, oh, my word is still with me. He's older than ever before. More disgruntled, more predictable. He's boring, Lord. Absolutely boring. You didn't tell me about the suffering. You told me about the engagement ring. You told me about 
about the winning ring, but you did not tell me about the suffering. I'm suffering, Lord. While I wake up in the morning and count your blessings, He is still with you. You're still waking up with your husband. As long as he may be, as boring as he may be, guess what? He's sleeping more bed last night. Be thankful. He came home to your house. He still pays bills. He still works. He still hangs up. But you know that he hasn't had a best friend. He has a big step. But you know what? Maybe if you praise him, he'll do something about it. Why don't you start counting the blessings about your husband? And before you know it, you say, Thank you, Lord, for my husband. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, babe, I was going to tell you, you're the best man on the planet. Watch, watch those wrinkles disappear. Watch the baby become a chest today. He'll find a way of, hmm, shoulders will go back. And you'll say, what can I do for you, baby? You've been waiting for that for such a long time. You'll be like, oh, God, when is he going to say it? Well, he'll never say it when you treat him like a kid. He will never say it when you try and be the Holy Spirit in his life. He will never say it. Criticizing him and bringing him down in the presence of other men. But when you honor him, when you respect him, and praise comes out of you, and you start to adore him, I want to tell you something shifts in the presence of praise. Something shifts in his heart. Something shifts in his mind. And suddenly that man believes in himself again, and he believes it's possible. And before you know, he'll fix everything in one day in your house. And don't use it as a manipulation. Now come on, we've got to understand the power of praise. Luke chapter 2 and verse 20 at the birth of Jesus. The shepherds returned after seeing Jesus as a baby in the manger. They returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. You know why we don't give thanks and praise? Because we're not so observant. We get so tunnel vision, consumed in our duties, our responsibilities, our workload, trying to fix issues upon issues upon issues that we're actually not watching and listening. You know, the other day I, I felt God saying to me, go to Belway, my wife, and say to her, I see you. So I went to her and I said, babe, okay, in my house I say sexy, babe. Hey, sexy, babe. Did the pastor just say sexy babe? Absolutely. Why? Is she sexy babe? I see you. She's like, what do you mean? I said, I see you. I saw you cleaning the dishes and the sweat tapping off you in the heat of tonight. I see you. And I want to say thank you. And I want to say that you're the best. You see, if I say thank you, I find myself in the courts of praise. And when I say, you're amazing, man, she just washes another dish. She's just trying to find another dish. What other dish can I wash? The greatest motivation in love. You want your children to excel. Stop comparing your children to how you used to be when you were a child. It took you 40 years to get where you are. Give your 10 year old a bit of grace. Rather praise him and watch that 10 year old Fly in your presence when praise comes into the relationship. But you've got to look for it and you've got to hear, hear it. But Romans 1 verse 21 says, For although these people knew God, they neither glorified Him as God and nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. He speaks about a group of people that stopped giving God thanks and because of that, stopped glorifying God, which meant that they stopped Praising God. You know, when you stop praising God, you take yourself to a dark place. You take yourself to a foolish place. When your heart becomes foolish and your mind becomes careless. When you stop praising each other, you start taking your relationship into a dark place. Where foolishness starts to come through. Where carelessness starts to come through. Where now, suddenly, what's on the internet becomes more attractive towards what is actually in your house. Because you decided to stop giving thanks and you decided to stop giving praise. It becomes a downward spiral. Psalm 22 verse 3. Oh, please listen to this this morning. Verse 3. But you are holy, Lord, enthroned in the praises of Israel. That word enthroned means inhabited in the praises of Israel. Have you ever heard that God inhabits the praises of His people? Listen to this very carefully this morning. Come on, mate. 
That word in habits means I will come and dwell with you. I will come and sit with you and do life with you. I will settle in your midst. I will be with you through it all. I'm coming to make my home with you because you are praising me. See, we know many stories. We've seen it with our own eyes. We've seen demons for you in the midst of praise. We've had praise and worship in church when people have fallen out of the power of God that have been physically healed. We've seen demons get out of people. We've seen the miraculous take place where God's people decide to praise. You know why? Because when you start to praise God, God starts to flex his muscles. Because when he inhabits the God of the universe, so big, so strong, so mighty, comes into our little small space, it can only but explode. Something's going to shift. Something's going to change. Because nothing can contain God. He is so big, he's so mighty, but every time you praise him, this big God steps into your small space and everything changes. Can you imagine applying that same principle into your marriage? No matter all of God, you don't understand what we've been through. Well, why don't you step in with a little praise and see what changes? See what shifts? Amen? But here's the key. Here's the key. Someone has to accept this this morning because some of you are struggling with this. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I have no problem to give praise, but I struggle to receive it. That's the problem. See, the Bible says God inhabits. You know that word inhabits? It also means God accepts our praise. And He says, I accept it. I receive it. I thank you for it. And He steps in. He doesn't say, I don't deserve it. I don't believe you mean it. I believe you're trying to manipulate me. And I'm your God. Don't think you can sweet talk me. Don't think you can just praise me through it. And then I can just be a pawn in your hand. Forget it, God, and for God. God says, I just accept it. Just, you praise me, I recognize it. I accept it. How many times when someone praises you, you think they've got a hidden agenda, an ulterior motive, that in your heart you restrict yourself from receiving it because you don't trust people. You don't trust them. You've been so betrayed, you've been so hurt, when anyone wants to praise you, you think, ah, that is one of my money. That is one of my time. That is one of my energy. I'm telling you, that, that in, in South Africa, we know anything and everything can get hijacked. Even conversations get hijacked. And you're just trying to hijack me right now with your sweet talk. That's why you're not experiencing the breakthrough because you're not inhabiting the praises of your husband. You're not inhabiting the praises of your wife. You're not inhabiting your children walk in and say, Daddy, 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 you're the best. Okay, 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 I'll talk to you later. That's why you're not going to another level because you're not observing the praise that's coming from your children. Recognize it and inhabit it and accept it. For when you accept it, everything changes. Psalm 67 verse 5 says, May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. And you say, why? Then, everyone say then. Shout it out. Then. The land will yield its harvest and God our God will bless us. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for a harvest this year. But we've been here for 23 months. I'm saying, Jesus, I want a harvest this year. You will not know what we've lost. You know what we've been through. I want my harvest. He says, you want your harvest. You want the land. Yo, do you not understand? You've got to go to another land for your harvest. Who said you've got to go to another land for your harvest? You can receive your harvest in South Africa. That's where God wants you to be. You only leave this country if God commands you to leave this country. Otherwise, you stay in the land that God plants you and you praise Him in that land. And let that land yield its harvest. Oh, go to Australia. Oh, what do you think Australia is going to help you? Leave you with your issues. You're around there with your issues and you get more issues. Anywhere on this planet, we live in a fallen, broken world. We've got to learn to give God praise in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of corruption, in the midst of unhappiness. In the land that we are in, we don't run, we don't hide. We stand as the light of the world and we give God praise. And in that hand, has to yield its fruit. Oh my God, you don't understand PCA. God's greater than PCA, my goodness. When He wants your water to flow, no matter how much they can close the water, miraculously water will flow. When God wants water to flow, no one can stop the water from flowing. Put on the garment of praise. 
change. Amen? So I verse 2 says, From the lips of children and infants are getting started with me. You have ordained praise because of your enemies. What? You ordained praise because of your enemies. To silence the foe and the avenger. When you give God praise, you're shutting the devil. Oh, my boy, just shutting him up, good and solid. Every time you give God praise. When you wake up in the morning, you start praising your wife, praising your child, praising one another. What a, oh, you understand the boss of them. Or why don't you rather go to your boss and say, find something good about him. I don't want to take hours to find something. <laughs> and then you praise him for that good. And you shut the mouth of the devil. For what God prays you in your life. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 22 says, As they began to sing and as they began to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Oleg and Mount Seir to invade you and they were defeated. Do you know when you give God praise, God is working in the background. God is working in ways that you will never understand. You will just see the harvest. But He's the one that orchestrated the harvest because you were willing to offer a sacrifice of praise. Acts 16 verse 25, we're almost down. And at midnight, here Paul and Silas, this is the big story. They have been chained, they have been stripped, they have been beaten for doing something good. That's an injustice. They get locked up in the inner cell. And in those days, the prisons were not built alongside each other. The prison cells were built on top of each other. And when you speak about the inner cell, that is the bottom, bottom cell. So you've got all the prison cells above you. It is the darkest cell. It is the lowest of all the cells. That after being stripped, after being beaten, put in total darkness, there was no lamp on at all. Their feet were in shadows. Their no cells were known to attract rats. Can you imagine sitting there, feeling something run right over your feet, sitting there, the blood is coming off your back, the body in justice. Of us is so unjust. This government is so unjust. How could they throw us into this inner cell? Paul and Silas at midnight, <laughs> they prayed and they sang praises to God. How did they get into the praise? They sat in their darkness and they didn't complain, but they started to give thanks. They started to thank God. We're still alive, Lord. There's still hope. Thank you, Lord, that we're being stripped and beaten for doing something good, Lord. We've been persecuted for righteousness. Before you know it, they started giving God praise. The prisoners started to hear what they were saying. Verse 16. And suddenly, there was a great everyone shout, earthquake! Let's try again. Everyone shout, earthquake! Who needs an earthquake this year? An earthquake in your bank account. Hallelujah. Come on now. Something that I didn't know to take out of my wife, Lord. Really? There was an earthquake. So the foundations of the prison were shaken. Why was the prison shaken? Because who inhabited the praises? Who stepped in that no prison bars can hold him back? The God of the universe. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were released. Not just Paul and Silas. Do you know when you start to give God praise, your children will benefit, your relationships will benefit, your colleagues will benefit, the church will benefit, everyone will benefit because they start hearing what's coming off your lips openly, not in silence, but openly. Then they know what caused the earthquake, the praise. What brought the harvest, the praise. I want to hear these words one day, and I really believe God wants you to know these words are important. Matthew 25 verse 21 says, The master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come share your master's happiness. You know what I want to hear one day when I get a hearing? This is well done. You did it. Well done. But when I hear it, I'm going to turn it around very quickly. And I'm saying, no, no, no. Every praise belongs to our life. Well done. So I've got just three, five minutes to end. To end these five minutes, I want you to bear with me. I'm going to constrain my enthusiasm right now. And I just want to read some last scriptures to you. Let the word of God just be heard. Put down a few things and we're going to end. Will you bear with me? Are you ready? 
John 12 verse 43 says, For they love the praise from men more than the praise from God. Do you know that God actually wants to praise you? He wants to whisper into your heart, well done. He wants to encourage you. Proverbs 27 verse 2, just for those that struggle to receive praise. Verse 2 says, let another praise you and not your own mouth. Someone else and not your own So it is okay to receive praise. Inhabit it. Accept it. And watch something shift. Watch your self-confidence go to another level. But when you praise your own self, that takes you to a place of arrogance and not confidence. Proverbs 27 verse 21 says, The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but man is tested by the praise he receives. Praise is important coming your way, but when it comes, it's a test. How do you receive it? Do you just reject it say, no, 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 no thank you. And you don't inhabit it, or do you inhabit it? Or do you take it and run with it, and before you know it, can lead to arrogance, to guard your heart? Ephesians 4 verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may bear for those who listen. Every husband in this place, let me tell you, your wife needs your praise more than the praise of any other man. Hear it. Don't ever say, oh, I let the boss be the one to give the praise. No, then you're going to have an affair on your hands. You give the praise. Because let me tell you what comes after praise. Intimacy. And you know why the face come into people's relationships? Because someone's not giving someone praise. And nothing's changing in their relationship. So they're hungry for praise and they get praise from someone else. And before you know it, you get to hear about this next Sunday. The place of intimacy. Suddenly they get intimate with people they shouldn't and you've got a full blown affair because someone did not give praise when praise was supposed to be given. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 26 and one part suffers, every part suffers with it, and one part honors, is honored, every part should rejoice with it. You know, we go through a pandemic where everyone is mourning with others, and there's a place for mourning. But how about a place of honoring? How about a place of honoring? How about going past someone that served to them and not just say thank you for what you did, but can I say you did a great job? Well done. Well done. Oh, did you get a bonus? Well done. Did you get a raise? Did you get a promotion? What about me? It's not fair. No, well done. From verse 28 and verse 21. Yeah, quickly, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat through glass. Here's one. How are you managing your tongue? Bring life. You know how do you bring life? Here's the last few verses. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Matthew 12, verse 34. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account in the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Oh my God. Help us. Do you know how to guard your mouth? What are you storing in your heart? I know when someone's bitter. If they're storing bitterness in their heart, it will come out of their mouth. I, I know when they're storing insecurities in their heart because they will struggle to accept compliments. No, 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 I'm not worthy enough. No, 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 don't praise me. Praise Jesus. They even get religious. It sounds so spiritual. But stored so many insecurities on this. What you store in your heart will come out of your mouth. So you can observe and store good things about your husband, store good things about God, store good things about your church, store good things about your church, store good things about what you're doing in your heart, fill your heart with good things, and guess what's going to come out of your mouth? Praise. I don't know if I'm, this is officially up, but I'm going to give you the last few the last few pointers anyway, for free, as that? for free, for free. Everyone says for free, they run away. This is for free. Amen. So here we go. Let me read it out to you. Results of praise. Are you ready? These are the results. If you praise God vertically and praise each other horizontally. Number one, it motivates and mobilizes. Number two, it revives and restores. Number three, it delivers and it heals. Number four, it silences and it attracts. And not about you. But my word, I want to invest in this lifestyle. 
Walking the bridge of praise, don't use it to manipulate. Speak it with sincerity and truth. Keep making it about others because it's not about you. And sow it and you will reap it. And sow it and you will also reap from it. Two different reaping. If you sow praise, guess what you reap back? Praise from others. But when you sow praise, you also reap because the land will yield the harvest. Something will change. But don't manipulate. Speak it with sincerity and truth and always make it about others. But we burn the bridge. You know why we stop giving praise? Unfulfilled expectation. We're angry. You're upset. Number two, an offended heart. Why must I praise you? You know how much harm you brought into my life. A critical mind. You know, God, if I was just God of this universe, I would have acted a little bit quicker than you. I want to be disrespectful, God, but sometimes I think you're very slow. Sometimes I think you just do that. You accommodate people way too much. I would have killed them by now, I would have removed them by now, I would have imprisoned them by now. God, can you step out of the way and let me in? God says, no, that's not what we're doing. Burning the bridge of praise because of a state of hopelessness. We're living in a world, and you need to understand that East London is in a state of hopelessness. That's why East London is a dirty city. You drive the streets of East London, it's dirty. You know why people start to neglect? It's because they have no hope. When people are in a state of hopelessness, their house becomes dirty. Their business becomes dirty. Everything becomes dirty and messy. Nothing's in order. Nothing is clean. Because you're living in a state of Hopelessness and so you are screaming every single time. But thank you, Jesus. How do you have a wonderful lifestyle of praise? Number one, avoid negativity. I can't just tell you, don't you? One of you today, your biggest guest is going to be after today's great church service. Some of them are going to you and they're going to be very negative. Some of them are going to post something on social media and it's going to be so negative. Guard your heart from using your voice of praise. Number two, count your blessings and you will develop a lifestyle of praise. Number three, guard your ears and guard your eyes because evil is around us at all times. And lastly, if you want to develop a lifestyle of praise, practice kingdom values, not your cultural values, not your traditional values, not the values that have been taught by your grandparents and brought down to you because not all of that Jesus said, see my kingdom and my righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So you've got to practice these values, the kingdom values, and watch a lifestyle of praise in village in your life. Please stand with me, church. To all our online viewers and listeners, we want to thank you for joining us this morning. We hope you've been listening at home. As you heard God's word, I've preached it with great passion and conviction because I believe it works. The word of God never changes. When the word of God is preached in its fullness, everything changes and everything shifts. Run with the word this morning. Forget about what others are saying and hold to the anchor of your salvation, which is Jesus. Focus on Him to the very end. He will see you through the storm. God bless you as you praise Him in the midst of your storm.